begin with a question for you all. What are the stories that have shaped you? So I just want this question to linger in your head while this whole talk is happening. And just ask yourself, go inward and ask yourself, what are the stories that have shaped you? For me, the stories that have shaped me actually revolved around my childhood. So I was raised in Manila and I grew up hiking mountains when I was 13 by my father. You know, I went to Catholic schools as well and like been taught about Jesus and all that stuff. And I was able to, you know, go into my childhood by reading National Geographic magazines, um, going to different places around the Philippines from Laguna all the way to Pataan. And I asked myself, are these the only stories that have shaped me? Going beyond myself, I realized that there are also stories of the external world around us, you know, stories of colonization, stories of injustices, stories of opp oppression within our country in the Philippines. And I realized that these stories are actually ones that we kind of see every day. You know, you go out of this place, you go out of this auditorium, and you start to see the stories forming all around you. You know, the impressions that were left to us by the Spanish and American colon colonizers, all the way to about the oppression and injustices that we face through climate change and the environment. But there are also the stories that are lived. I work as a storyteller and as a photographer, a National Geographic explorer, where I am able to actually live in between these two realms of my inward stories and the stories of the outside world. I get to live and climb on you know, treetops where I'd be staying in a treehouse for a week waiting for a, bird to take, waiting for a bird to fly for me to take a photograph of it. I would be climbing glacial mountains all the way in India and in the Himalayas in different continents around the planet. And I never realized that this life that I have now were actually you know, formed by the stories that have shaped me of outside and the inside world. And, but before everything actually started, I was clueless. You know, when I was 13, going into high school, going into college in UP, I was such a clueless person. I did not know what I wanted to do in my profession. I just took you know, an engineering course because this is what my parents told me. I didn't know what I wanted to you know, discover or travel or study, but it was this cluelessness of not knowing anything that led me and drove me to curiosity, you know, of asking questions, of being inquisitive of the world and your inner self. What do I really like? What are the passions that drive me forward? What are the places that I dreamed of and what I want to go and travel? Which eventually led to this exploration. And it was a cycle, you know, every year, every month, sometimes you would have like this existential crisis. What am I doing? Am I significant? You know, what is the meaning of all of life? But these questions, these existential questions formed by the cluelessness was this pattern, a pattern that I recognized and embraced that it's okay to be clueless. It's okay to not know everything. Because later on, as you move forward through both the physical and the internal worlds and stories that have shaped you, you start to really discover who you are as a person, of what you dream of, what, you pa what you're passionate about. And it's a story of ongoingness, you know? I have been working a lot in advocacies in wetlands, and the wetlands are actually the place of transitions where land turns to water and water turns to mountains and seas. So this is a place where I realize a liminal state of nothingness, of things and evolution where things can create, where migratory birds would fly and migrate, where places are always moving, rivers, tributaries, lakes, and wetlands. This ongoingness then made me question, you know, I was in college and I was thinking, I was studying engineering, civil engineering, aspiring to be an environmental engineer. But I've also had this affinity and love for the arts, of photography, of filmmaking. And I've always thought, you know, my parents would always tell me that the only successful way to life is to become an engineer, a lawyer, or a doctor. 
that you can't make dreams of something you're passionate about, even if it's the field of arts where sometimes it's not so valued or appreciated. I put myself in a box. I marginalized myself thinking that these two things, that engineering and photography, were at two ends of a spectrum. When reality, they're just an integra integrated um, place, an integrated um, fields where you can actually discover and find the place on where you belong in this. I accepted this. I embraced it so much that throughout college, I never imagined that I would get paid to travel the world, you know, to camp under deserts and under the Milky Way, you know, watching galaxies pass by, or even, you know, dive under coral reefs in the Philippines and even in the coral triangle of Indonesia, all the way in all around Southeast Asia. And even, you know, witness the beautiful, majestic raptors, animals that are endangered, animals that, you know, may never cease to exist in the next time. It was embracing this ability to see beyond the margins that I've placed myself, where I thrusted forward, discovering my true north, you know, that I am an explorer, and it is the nothingness, this cluelessness that drives me forward. But in seeing this perspective of capturing beauty, I also realize of the fragility of our planet. I witnessed destruction, extinction, you know, traumatizing events that sometimes I question, am I actually embracing the joy that I have in what I do? I see animals dying, being burned, you know, seeing peatlands and hectares of fire, destruction and habitats. But this was the truth, that in beauty, there's also fragility, a duality that exists a shift in perspective of embracing this duality as well. It was the margins that, again, that I placed myself, you know, as a, as a photographer that would just capture, or a conservation photographer that would just capture, you know, beautiful things. But was I speaking the truth, the truth of the duality of life? I remember the story just in pandemic when I covered the death of the last captive bred Tamarau named Kalibasiv. This is an endangered, and critically endangered land uh, animal that we have that's only found in the island of Mindoro. But seeing face to face with death, I realized that the importance of being able to tell the stories of the fragility of our planet. And the shifting perspective actually opened my eyes and gaze to the world. That the things that we see online, the beautiful things that we just see, that may not be the truth or it's only a partial truth that we see. And as a journalist, to be uncover and speak the truth, this is not how we should be able to see things, that it's just beauty and fragility, but a, you know, an um, amalgamation of life itself, of seeing the different margins and how you can integrate that. From my profession, seeing the margins and integrating that to a perspective and passions that I tried to integrate as well. But last year, I actually, you know, tried to really push myself out of these margins of not just depicting beauty and fragility, but going deeper inside myself when last year I realized that I was queer. You know, of things where I was placed in a box growing up in a Catholic school um, and growing up, you know, being thought about the things or the sins that who we are as humans, be human beings, as artists, as professionals of our own crafts, that we are bounded by these margins and boxes that society and even sometimes ourselves have put ourselves in. And I confronted this idea, you know, of what this perspective is all about, of what it means to truly, truly be you, of finding yourself at home, even if you're traveling to distant lands or dis experiencing different cultures, of being grounded, of being grounded of who you are and asking deeper questions of what you want to become in the future. And it was this rebirth, you know, from confronting death in externally and internally that I really embrace the form of transformation of what it means to be a human and what it means to relate to others. And now, I see when we think of things as like, you know, this masculine or feminine divine energies, it was just really, you know, a 
another spectrum that we put, uh, two different points of a spectrum, when in reality, it's also another form of duality. Um, and all on shedding all these boxes from your career, to your perspective, to even how you philosophize life. It's a real gift to embrace and being able to open your mind and seeing the inner and internal seas and the external forces around you. And now, I realize that this is it, that diversity is your greatest strength, that you should never limit yourself of what other people do or what, the, what other people tell you, what is successful, what is not. Because if you're always just following the things that you see or the, see, the things that you see online just because it's mainstream, just because it's funny, or you know, just because this is what people define success, joy, and happiness for you, you won't be able to realize your true potential as an individual, as a complex individual with so many dualities and so many binaries that you have to unmask and shed for yourself. And it's a journey. It's a long, tumultuous journey of knowing who you are and finding yourself. But you have to embrace that nothingness, of embracing that cluelessness inside of you, where you can find your truest strength. And I always tell myself, you know, like, burning all these things that have put me in these boxes and margins, you know, that a Filipino boy can become a National Geographic explorer, that a Filipino boy can dream of becoming a photographer, or even, you know, embracing the beauty and telling truth about the world. I don't want to actually be a hero in this world. That I want to be a villain, you know. It's my villain arc story because I want to be a villain of everything that society has imposed on us, on me. Because I know that finding yourself, that you are unique, an individual, with your own practices and crafts, will find your truest and greatest power to be able to realize your dreams and be able to really live and embrace your passions in this life. So thank you so much. And I want to ask you this question. In your life right now, what is your story? Thank you so much.